Hi, this is Sophie. Um, today I'm going to do a bookshelf tour of um, my horror bookshelf. Um, it's only three shelves, um, but it's a long video because I go through each one um, and talk about them more or less. Um, so I, I just want to say from the beginning that you're going to hear me talk a lot about um, the covers of the books um, and just in general I, I just want to say that um, in terms of the kind of horror that I like um, there's there's classic horror most of the top of this bookshelf is classic authors that wrote um, gothic horror or you know that kind of thing um, I do like that and also um, below are all our more contemporary authors but um, they are from the 70s 80s and 90s mostly there's a few modern ones mixed in like you know even the recent ones but the majority are from the 70s 80s and early 90s um, I believe the the prime time for horror fiction like a boom I guess you could say of horror fiction was between around 1967 to 1996 um, with Stephen King, Dean Koontz, and other big names like that, The Exorcist, and, and all of that stuff. There's, um, I'm going to link a video um, below that talks all about this, this type of um, horror from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. It's really, really, really well done. Really good, good video. Um, it's long, but it's it's worth it. At least the first half is worth listening to. Um, the it's it's the person who is speaking is Grady Hendrix, who wrote um, recently wrote a book called Paperbacks from Hell, and I do not have that book at this point. Um, I just heard about it recently. And it's, it's something I definitely want to, to get um, soon. Um, next chance I get, I'm, I'm going to get it. Uh, so it, it, just in general, um, he had a blog, or he has a blog, I believe he still, still does review books, um, kind of a book review of horror books. Um, and there, there are two or three different, um, I want to say book blo blogs, review blogs, um, by others that are kind of um, they're all they're all writing about the same thing these paperbacks from hell basically um, I don't know a lot about it um, I'm I just kind of discovered it so um, it sounds really interesting and I definitely want to get the book the video I'm going to link um, the first half is Grady Hendrix um, I think I believe uh, he also wrote something um, a recent horror um, book as well. I can't remember the name of it, so I will try to write it on the, you know, up, up there somewhere <laughs> um, or give you guys a, a photo insert of it because um, off the top of my head I don't remember. But it's also something that looks interesting to me. Um, and like I said, the video it will is him talking about horror. It's funny. It is hilarious. It is... Um, weird it's it's just really a good good video to watch to learn about that type of horror um and he, he it's just well well worth the time to listen to the first at least the first half of it it just excellent excellent video i'm going to start with the top shelf again because even though i've already done this one i'm not going to do all of these but there are a couple in the back that i added recently um, so I'm going to just do the ones that I added. And y if you want to see every one of these, there is a video um, that I did for this. Okay, so um, the first uh, one I'm going to show you is, um, these, are two, these are two that I could just recently got. Um, this is, uh, well actually let me start with this one. Okay, so the author is Joyce Carol Oates, and <clears throat> this is called Belle Fleur, 
um, is supposed to be, I, I, don't, I don't think all her novels are like this. I think this, she only has a few that were um, in this type of, this type of writing. Um, supposed to be gothic, um, basically. And I guess, you know, she's got a whole, she's got like hundreds of books. So it's really hard to know where to start with someone like her. Um, but for me, I, I love the, go the gothic stuff. So I went straight for the this one because this is probably the best in that genre. And I think there are three of them in this um, that go with this story or I don't know if they're, they're not, I think they're just all related, but they're, I don't know if they're actual trilogy. It's just, I don't know, they're related, I guess. So there's Bell, Bell Fleur and um, there's also another one called A Bloodsmore Romance. And then this one, which I, I wasn't able to get the Bloodsmore Romance at the bookstore that I was at. Um, this one is Mysteries of Winch, Winter Thern. Okay, so these, these go together. Um, I just think these are so intriguing. Um, they look really, really good. Um, I love this. This actually was a 1980 um, book. I think it was published in 1980. So it's really old. Um, I had to repair a little bit of the keyhole or cutout thing there. And then I love these covers. And when they open up, they have these really, this really, really good artwork inside. I'm going to get a close up on that. And some of this stuff is just so like hilarious to me. Like this guy over here, who's kind of like a, um, like a country bumpkin kind of guy. And then you get this cat that's looking through the keyhole. And then there's um, some kind of a hunched over guy that's over here and just all these kind of weird creepy characters um, that just that's right up my alley I don't know that's something about that just really appeals to me and if I mean I've read a few of Joyce Carol Oates short stories some of them are really really dark and disturbing. They're, you know, like about, um, you know, psychopathic murderers and things like that. I, I mean, they're really dark, but, um, this is different. This is supposed to be like a family saga. And I don't know, it just, I started reading the first paragraph. Um, and it, it just, it was so over the top, but it was really, I mean, it's good writing because Joyce Carol Oates, you know, um, I'm not even going to read it though, because it's really, it's just so, yeah, I don't even know. Um, it's, it's just this long drawn out sentence that lasts for almost, almost an entire paragraph. It's really, really interesting. Anyway, the, this, this looks good. Then there's um, this one, um, which kind of, I think it's, this one from what I read is going to be a few different stories within it that um, all relate to the same characters. So, all right. So there's, there's that. <clears throat> I'll put this up here. All right. So on the next shelf down, these are all the um, horror short story anthologies that I have. Um, the first one I have shown in a previous video, it's called The Dark Descent. Um, it is classic horror fiction um, short stories um, that kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of just something to introduce you to that, to that genre and um, see some of the different ways that it, you know, people wrote and different, different styles of horror, I guess. Um, so I think that's going to be good. I have not started it yet, but I'm going to I actually read the introduction, but, um, the next one I have is, it's called Vampires, Wine and Roses. Um, just another anthology. 
got a whisper of blood. Okay, so that one's also about vampires, I think. Yeah, it's also about vampires. All right. Um, edited by Ellen Dat Datlow, who I have heard of before. Not sure why, but I think she's she's good, I think. Um, this one is a pretty random one, but I got it for the cover, which I think is really kind of cool looking. Um, it's just Tales of Horror. It's got older stuff. I don't know how much newer stuff is in it. I think it's mostly older. Older, like classic authors. Got this one, um, The Ultimate Werewolf, and it has, um, I think there's, I want to say, I don't know if it's stories, but I just, there's some good authors in here. It's Harlan Ellison, um, Philip, Philip Jose Farmer, Craig Shaw Gardner. Yeah, just, it looks good. Then I got this one, um, it's called The Whisperer and Other Voices by Brian Lumley. Um, all short stories by him that are s sort of um, a Lovecraftian. That's what the back says. And I think that sounds interesting. This one is called the Mammoth Book of Vampire Stories um, by women, and it has Anne Rice, Tanith Lee, Poppy Z. Bright, um, Jane Yolen, and others. Those are ones I've heard of, and it's all about vampires as well. All short stories. This one. It's called The Best New Horror and uh, Two Decades of Dark Fiction. Clive Barker, Harlan, El Harlan Ellison, Neil Gaiman, Stephen King, Peter Straub, and many others. So that looks good. I'm actually gonna keep that one off. Um, this one is not really, a, it doesn't belong with the short stories and the um, anthologies, but I just kind of put it there. It's called Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, and it it's originally, if you see the bottom, it's scholastic. This was a book that my, my mother had bought this book. She found it somewhere, and she got it for my my daughters when they were really, really young, and they, they were really scared by it, and I never even, I, I mean, I looked at it a little bit. It looked interesting, but I I, you know, I might have, they just didn't really care for it because it was so scary. And I guess that's the thing about it. It's, um, for children, but it's, it's the, the illustrations in it and the stories in it, they're just little things, um, little short things. Um, but they have, they just are really creepy and scary. Like here's one, that's a toe right there. Um, it's called The Big Toe, that story. And then there's, uh, I see if I can find a really scary one. I don't know. There's got to be some in here. Let's see. Well, there's this one. Oh, just creepy little things. <laughs> And yeah, so that that one. I think they made a movie about it. Okay, so um, on to the next group. I've got this one is called the Legacy, and uh, it's a no, um, it's an it's either called an it's either a novelization or tie -in. I'm not sure if it's a tie-in or a novelization, but it's basically there was a movie, I think, and this this is something that was written like either either it was before or after the movie. Anyway, um I never saw the movie at all, but I've heard of it and it, it's from I think this one is 1974. So 
yeah, it was just, I was way too young um, to watch anything, like, 79. Um, yeah, I never, I never saw this movie. But I do remember seeing this cover, like, around. And it, it does have a little nostalgia for me. Um, but it's supposed to be a story of, like, sort of a mystery, but supernatural. Um, six beautiful people arrive for a weekend in the country. Six guests of the unseen host who lies wasting away upstairs. Five heirs to a mysterious legacy watch the body of the sixth float to the side of the pool. That's enough for now. Okay, so that looks good. Then I have... Um, these are, these are called serial, um, serial, serial stories. Um, all the Blackstone Chronicles, it's called. This is by John Saul. Now, John Saul, I have never read anything by John Saul. Not a thing. Um, he wrote, he was really popular in the 70s um, as a horror author. I think the st the most famous ones that he wrote were, it was Suffer the Children, Punish the Sinners, and um, some of those. But they're, they're really like kind of a, like I think they're kind of gothic sounding to me, but um, I, I haven't read those, um, and I'm going to hold off on those. I'm not sure I like, I'm going to like Jean Saul, basically. <laughs> so I got these little, um, these little ones, just these little stories. There's the, um, an eye for an eye, the doll. Um, Twist to fate, the locket. Ashes to Ashes, The Dragon's Flame. In the Shadow of Evil, The Handkerchief. The Day of Reckoning, The Stereoscope. And Asylum. <laughs> so, those are those all go together. <laughs> um, and let's see what's next. I'm going to get to the back stuff actually let me yeah I'll do these back ones first so okay um this was one I recently read this is Twilight Eyes Dean Koontz I I really like Dean Koontz I remember reading him a little bit um vaguely when I was you know 12 or 13 and um I remember liking the books back then but I don't recall anything of the plot at all and, um, so yeah, so I wanted to kind of revisit Dean Coates and I did, and I liked, I like him. Um, so I read this one. I have never read this one, but it looks really good. That cover is just, to me, just, just, yeah, I don't know. It says, read me. Um, this cover also says, read me. Um, it's, see the little weird Nellie Olsen looking girl right there and um it's called Dark Boy. This this cover, yeah. This I remember from the 70s. Um okay. And then I have I have to make some room over here. <laughs> All right. Um then I have uh, this okay. So this is a VC Andrews um, set. Um, this is, these all go together. They're all about one particular family. Um, this, the first one is, it's Ruby and I think it's the, the Landry, the Landry series, they, they call it. Um, I read Flowers in the Attic and all of those, the Dollinganger series, um, when I was, um, very young. And, um, and I loved them back then. Um, and, you know, I, I haven't actually reread re those, um, because I can't find them. They're hard to, they're hard to find because they're usually pretty beat up when you find them because they're so old. I mean, 
they, they make reprints. I'm sure I could get a reprint, but I personally want the paperbacks that have the little cutout hole because that is that's the way it should be. And that's what looks best to me. And you could probably get, I mean, I know they, they come in hardback and you can get, um, you just get different versions of them, but this is the version that I, that I want. Um, so I'm hanging up, trying to, trying to get those, um, and at, at the, at anywhere I can find them. But I did get this one. Now the story with VC Andrews, um, she died right before the end of the last of the Darling Anger series, the Flowers in the Attic series. She she died. Um, and I, I don't know if it was the last book in that series. I think it was the last book in that series that ended up being written by a ghost writer um, by the name of Andrew Niederman. Andrew Niederman. Um, and he wrote every one of the follow-up series um, for V.C. Andrew's books. But he wrote, he didn't put his name. So, you know, everything that he wrote was put out as VC, VC Andrews. Um, so this was written by Andrew Niederman, but he is also a really good writer in my opinion. Um, and I have a bunch of his books also, but, um, this one, just the cover and then the inside just gives you an idea of what these are about. Um, they're Gothic horror, similar to the, the Joyce Carol Oates one with the weird families, the sagas, and, you know, just, just how creepy is that? <laughs> just look at the, this, the grandpa up in the corner there. Wonderful. Okay. And <laughs> this one is set in the, in New Orleans. So that's also, that sounds really interesting to me. Um, then I think, okay, the next one is Pearls in the Mist. So this is the same family, the Landry family, and you see you have the, on the cover, the New Orleans look with the, you know, that gothic look. And then, um, the cover on this one is, um, also, I'm sure they're all creepy in their own special way. This one <laughs> just really is creepy. Probably grandmother there. There's always some creepy grandmother and grandfather in these. Um, this one is All That Glitters. Um, pretty cover. And another creepy picture. <laughs> and Hidden Jewel is the next one which that's a really nice cover. Another creepy inside. Uh, and the last one is, they, the last ones are always like a prequel where they go back and go back to some ancestor <laughs> that started all the trouble, I guess. And then um, this one's called Tarnished Gold. And, um, that just looks really creepy and so yeah okay um that goes there let's see all right so now i'm gonna go for this big stack right here of um just these are not um i don't really know most of the authors on here there might be one or two that i've heard of but i'm just gonna show you each one so this one is um i found this one actually at a goodwill um it's really nice i think it's I think it's 1980. Let me see what the date. These are all pretty much from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, almost all of this type of book. Um, so this one, what did I say it was? 89? 99? 99. I'm, I'm not sure. It was in the 90s. Okay. So Waiting by Frank M. Robinson. And it has the cutouts and the, um, he's called a step back or a setback cover or something like that they call those with artwork inside I love those um, so this one um, let's see I'm 
trying to find a description of it, but the back doesn't describe it. Um, yeah. Then let's see. Okay. This next one, Candle Night by Phil Rickman. Um, and this one doesn't have the cover, the setback cover, but it's still it's still a neat cover. I like that. Um, And these two, these two I just kind of grabbed. I've never heard of this author. These were written, I think, in the early 90s. So, and they're pretty beat up. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, I'm not really a collector. I mean, not like a collector collector. Um, so I don't have the time or the money or the patience for them. <laughs> but I do, these are, these are really neat. Um, I've got If Thoughts Could Kill. It has kind of a, it got messed up, but I try to fix them as best I can. Author is G.F. Bale. I think that is a pseudonym. I looked it up. Um, I've never heard of the actual author, though, either. And I don't think she wrote anything beside, besides these two. That This is it for her. Um, <laughs> sort of a one-hit wonder <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so I don't even, wouldn't even know if I would call this a hit, but... <laughs> Um, it looks good to me. It says, um, if thoughts could kill, it's supposed to be about a woman, um, who has some kind of powers naturally and, um, something about some cruel, sadistic husbands that need to be stopped. Ah, sounds good. Um, and then cry, baby, cry. <laughs> it's kind of a cheesy title. And then this other, oh, I didn't even show the artwork on this one, did I? Nope, I didn't. There's an artwork on that one. <laughs> and then um, this one is the second one. I guess there's they're, they're both the same story, um, characters, whatever. Uh, sequel. And there's the inside cover. <laughs> and this one is the same concept, you know, the woman with with the powers and the, this time there's a kidnapping involved. And I don't know, but looks good. Um, and let's see. Don't know anything about this one. I've heard of the author, though. I think it's a Graham Masterson. Master, Master, Masterton. That, that name I know from somewhere. And so this looks good. It's called Prey. Um, there's something in the attic at 40 foot house something that rustles something that scampers and scratches something with fur but it isn't a rat it's something far far more terrifying than a rat okay all right this one is called disciples of dread um by Hugh B. Cave, I have never heard of him. Um, that's just some kind of a voodoo doll thing going on. Um, this one um, is see, a, the lush island of Jamaica is a wonderful vacation spot, but Mark Derner's not on a vacation. He's running for his life from the Disciples of Dread international terrorist organization whose leader wants to use Mark to trap his psychically gifted twin brother Vincent, an American espionage agent. <laughs> okay. So, that was good. This one looks pretty creepy to me. It's called the, it's called Abomination by Michael C. Norton, who I also have never heard of. Um, they were just kids playing in the graveyard among the rotting bones of the dead. They were just kids playing new and explosive games, indulging in forbidden practices, exciting each other and something else, something evil. <laughs> they were just kids, but their play had awakened a dark, malevolent force that would stalk them by day and haunt their dreams at night, for it was an insatiable thing that fed on flesh and spirit, an elusive creature that could take many forms. That looks good. Okay. These two are by 
this author's, um, so my, I read short stories by him and I liked his writing, um, Ramsey Campbell. This one is um, The Count of Eleven, which is something about letters. It involves letters. And then this one is um, called The Nameless and it involves some kind of cult. So also interesting. And then we have Floating Dragon by Peter Strahl. Now this author I have heard of. I've never read anything by him. But this is, I'm pretty sure my mother had ghost story hanging around the house somewhere. And probably this one too. I think so. Um, I never read either one of them. I was way too young and didn't, yeah. But they looked intriguing to me back then, and I remember these. And this is this cover, this one is from the story. Let's see, I want to say 1980, but let's see. 82. 1982. And Ghost Story, I think, is supposed to be the quieter, um, more slow building story. And this one's the wild and crazy one. So I got I picked the right one. All right. Um then let's see. Whoops. All right. Ay, ay, ay. I do have more John Saul books, but I was only going to read the, the Blackstone Chronicles and maybe this one. Um, this is called the Manhattan Hunt Club. Um, falsely convicted of a brutal crime, college student Jeff Conrose sees his future vanishing before his eyes, but someone has other plans for Jeff in a place far deadlier than any penitentiary. Jeff finds himself beneath the teeming streets of Manhattan in a hidden landscape of twisting tunnels and forgotten subterranean chambers. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Um, these were ones that I showed you guys in um, on a previous video. There's Necroscope by Brian Lumley. vampires and I think there's seven books in this. I only have the first two. Second one, um, Vam Vampiri. I don't know, but this cover is <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, then let's see. Now I've got Interview with the Vampire. Uh, such nostalgia for this. I haven't read this since I think I was 21 when I read this, somewhere around there, 20, 20 or 21, and I loved it. I just loved it. Um, back then, I picked it up because I was really bored, um, and I just, my mother had this one lying around. She had a lot of good books lying around, and I wish I'd kept them. <laughs> and so I, I picked this one up, and it just... It didn't even sound that good to me, Interview with a Vampire. Wow, that doesn't even sound scary. But, um, you know, I just got hooked from the first page on. I, I couldn't put it down. It was really good. Um, the sequel, The Vampire Lestat, which I have read, and it was very good as well. I did not read this one. This is the third one. Um, so, yeah, I stopped after the first two because life came along and, get distracted but I wanted to finish these um the queen of the damned the tale of the body thief I love this this cover and memnock the devil okay that's it for Anne Rice um then I have um I'm gonna get more from her but that's all I have for now okay so Onto the bottom shelf. Um, so we're at 20 minutes. I don't know if I can do this or not. I'm gonna really, really try. So I've got Ashley Bell, Dean Koontz. I wasn't sure if I was going to keep this one, um, but when I started reading Dean Koontz again, I decided I really liked him. <laughs> so um, I'm definitely gonna read this one. World War Z, Max Brooks. I think I saw the movie, but the movie has nothing to do with the book, apparently. It doesn't even, yeah, the book is totally different and it's supposed to be good, so looking forward to that. 
Um, I've got the three. The, there's a trilogy, so I've got the passage, Justin Cronin, um, the city. Wait, the twelve is next. Sorry, sorry. The twelve is the second one. Okay, um, and then the city of mirrors. I talked about this in um, a previous video. I'll just read the back just in case you'd missed that other video. Um, an epic and gripping tale of catastrophe and survival. The passage is the story of Amy, abandoned by her mother at age of six, pursued and then imprisoned by the shadowy figures behind a government experiment, always a government experiment going wrong, of apoc apocalyptic proportions. But Special Agent Brad Wolgast, the lawman sent to track her down, is disarmed by the curiously quiet girl and risks everything to save her. As the experiment goes nightmarishly wrong, Wolgast secures her escape, but he can't stop society's collapse. I'm not going to read it anymore because it gives away the story. and Nobody wants that. Just read it. It's good. Um, okay. All right. Um, so, um, I mentioned before with, um, BC Andrews that when she passed away, Andrew Niederman, um, Andrew Niederman is the other author that wrote, um, the rest of all her series. Um, he, he, I've never read anything other than, other than the, um, BC Andrews stuff that he did. I've not read anything else by him, um, like of his own works. So there's, um. This one is called The Immortals. I just think the cover looks so intriguing on that one. Um, yeah, that that one. Oh, here's one. This this one just I jumped out at me. Um, I want to say that. Let's see what the date on this one is. These are all 70s, 80s, and 90s. But this one's this one's 1981. It's called Brainchild. <laughs> Um, and then you got this little kid right there and, um, and you open it up and there's more creepy things inside. So, um, it's kind of something about doing an experiment on their family. I don't really know. I just, I got, I, I, I got it for the cover and I got it because, um, just it, um, the author. So we'll see if it's any good. Claymates by, by Andrew Niederman. Um, just can't beat the covers on these things. That looks so good. Okay, we have Afterlife. We have Pin. And if, um, if I read the the, the little description up here, it's, it's so, I don't, I don't know the word <laughs> to describe. Um, brother, sister, madness, sin. Now the terror will begin. <laughs> All right. So, um, the thing about Andrew Niederman and his stuff, um, even the V.C. Andrews stuff. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of brother, sister things and family incestuous things going on. Typical gothic, nonsense and weird weird stuff so yeah there's that what else um we've got all right so i got a stack of stephen king Ugh, so many i'm not even gonna i'm not gonna mention much about these i'm just gonna show them so don't dance dance macabre dance macabre but which is about by the way um i think just the history of horror, according to Stephen King. And it has lots of photos all throughout, lots of photos um, from the films and Okay, there's, I 
can't wait to get to this one, Salem's Lot. This was one that was lying around my house. All these Stephen King ones were lying around my house when I was a kid. Didn't, didn't read this one though. I read The Stand um, when I was about 20 or 19 or 20, something like that. Um, so this one looks good. Rose Matter. I started reading this, I got about maybe a third of the way through, and it was really good. I just got distracted with something else. I put it down. So I want to finish it. And, you know, it's just a cool looking cover. I've got Pet Cemetery. This is um, a new edition. I heard all good things about Pet Cemetery. All good things. Um, the Shining. This one was lying around my house. Did not read it. Saw the movie. But the movie and this are different, I think. That's what I hear. Now, this one sounds really cheesy. Uh, called Cell. But <laughs> I think it actually sounds pretty interesting. Um, okay, so this was written, I believe, I don't know a lot, but I think it was written around the time when cell phones were new. So King Kara, he's writing um, like an apocalyptic story based around the cell phone technology, the new cell phone technology. And that just sounds really interesting to me because um, I like apocalyptic stuff and all that. So, All right, more King. Let's see, I've got, these two kind of go together. Um, and these two I picked because, let's see, regu the regulators, um, and that, you know, Richard Machman, his pseudonym, and then Desperation. These have the little covers, the artwork inside. And the reason I got these, um, because I read what they were about and it sounded interesting. I think this entire chunky book, uh, yeah, like 500 something pages, both of them. Now her both, both take place, at least one of them does, I, but possibly both, take place in one day. 500 pages taking place in one day. So that just, that to me, that was enough. That sold me. I want to read it. Okay. Um, this is the talisman. Um, is Stephen King and Peter Shaw together writing this, followed by Black House. So those two go together, one and one and two. And there's different seasons, which is short stories. Um, and there's the Eyes of the Dragon. Okay, what else? Okay. Now I've got one more author here. I've got, okay, so this one is John Ferris. The name sounded familiar, but I, I, I think, yeah, okay, so he wrote um, something called um, Son of the Endless Night, which has to do with um, kind of a possession or exorcism, something like that. And there was also a trial in the back. Like, so it's a trial drama and an exorcist, trial drama and exorcist together. But this got really good reviews from everybody that I've seen. And um, I'm going to read this at some point. Um, the other book that I got, I got a few books by him. They're in, um, I'll get to those after, but this one um, got the best reviews that I've seen. It's called um, All Heads Turn When the Hunt Goes By. So um, I really don't know what it's about like at all, but I think it looks good and it got good reviews. So the next set of books that I have are all, these are all Clive Barker. I've never read anything at all by Clive Barker. Um, I look forward to doing so. I hear he's a really good writer. So um, the first one I got is, it's called Weave World. 
And this cover is just crazy. I love it. Um, sparkly. And she's so sparkly. Crazy people on the inside there. I don't know. Weave World sounds good. And this one is another one I got for the cover. Um, Aberat? I think it's some kind of world. He writes a lot about that, like worlds, and you, you know, you kind of have to get into this imaginary world, which I would love to do. And then, um, let's see. Here's another world, another imaginary kind of world thing. Fantasy, dark fantasy, I think, is what you would classify this. Um, it's called Imagica. And it's it was such a thick book that they split it into two <laughs> because it just if you you could get get it all as one book, but it's so and I saw it. I was going to get the one, but it, it's so big that it just gets ruined, you know, because when, by the time you get to the end, every, it's going to be falling apart. So they made it into two, but it's really one book, um, part one and part two, Imagica by Clive Barker. All right. Um, this one looked really good. The big store owner said, recommended it. He said it was really good. Um, the Thief of Always. Um, it's about a boy. It's kind of a, I want to see like, it's not really a, child, a story for children, but it's kind of, um, so like it, it has, it has a child like tone, I think to it, um, in the story. Mr. Hood's holiday house has stood for a thousand years, welcoming countless children into its embrace. It is a place of miracles, a blissful round of treats and seasons where every childhood whim may be satisfied. There is a price to be paid, of course, but young Harvey Swick, bored with his life and beguiled by Mr. Hood's wonders, does not stop to consider the consequences. Um, and then this last one looked really interesting to me. It's called um, Callalee by Clyde Barker. Um, it's, I don't know, just, it sounds like another huge family saga that is, yeah, kind of gothic and weird. Um, rich and powerful, the Geary dynasty has reigned over American society for decades, but it is a family with dark terrible secrets, of course. And um, this got good reviews. Um, looks good. And that's it. That's it for the shelf. Um, that, that I think yeah, we've done everything. Um, I have a box here. I can't go through it because it's taking too long. Um, but there's nothing in here that really, um, they're just more by the same, more books by the, the same authors that I'm probably not going to get to for a while. Um, and then there's some books that I'm going to resell. I don't know. This one, I got it, it. It just, I don't know. It just didn't appeal to me when I read it, like, more closely. I think it. it's, it's, I guess it's real. It gets really, really specific about the voodoo stuff, like into the deities and all that other stuff. And that's that's just a little too specific for me. I don't I don't need specific on deities of the voodoo's. I just need just cheesy horror. That's all I need. Um, okay. Um, let's see. I think that's it. There's nothing else really in the bar box that is worth showing. Um, this is the last one I think I'll show. Um, Dean Koontz, I got the first and second Frankenstein. Um, I think there's, I don't know, six or seven of these. Um, it's a series that he wrote based on the character of Frankenstein's monster. And um, yeah, so sounds good to me.
and it got good reviews and so I look forward to read this one. And that is it. This is a really long video. They normally won't be this long, but I wanted to kind of get through all of the uh, books on my horror bookshelf and that's all of them. And um, just the recent hauls that I did because they were all horror. <laughs> so um, that's it for today. I will be back with probably currently reading or something like that. I'm not sure yet, or maybe I'll do a tag. Um, so, see you later. Bye.